Right, joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, who represents the United States Virgin Islands, and Democratic Congressman Richie Torres, who represents the South Bronx of New York. Good to have you both. Stacey, uh, how much does this uh, leaked draft opinion, do you think, change really the scope uh, of the voters that Dems may want to try and attract in the midterms? Well, first, a belated happy birthday to you, Mika. It's all week <laughs> for you. your birthday. Um, I, of course. <laughs> but I think that it changes in the sense that we actually now, many Americans can see the real opinion and the thought process of the extreme right mm -hmm. of the Republican Party, where uh, Alito says in his opinion that, listen, this is not a right that women have always had. Therefore, we have the ability to take it away. Does that also uh, hold for a vote? rights uh, for black people, for women? Does that also hold for segregated schools, for gay marriage? I think this is really a water point that the Democrats need to capitalize on. And I'm hopeful that we're going to do that. You know, it's so interesting, Congressman Torres, you, you saw uh, a guy who loves wading into controversy, Ron DeSantis. Yeah. He'll even take on Mickey Mouse. When he's asked about Roe v. Wade, she says, hold on. Hold on. Let's just wait and see what the decision is. Let's just let's be calm. I mean, Ron DeSantis never, never uh, uh, pulls back like that. But there's a reason why. And it's something DeSantis is going to face and Republicans across America are going to face if this becomes law. This is yesterday from the Tampa Bay Times, uh, a poll uh, that asks how many Floridians support Roe v. Wade and how many Floridians want Roe v. Wade overturned? The number 68% agree with Roe v. Wade in Florida. Only 23%, one in five voters in Florida, want Roe v. Wade overturned. It seems the harsh ideology is going to come face to face with some of their own voters' uh, 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 desires. It make it tough out there for some Republicans. I, I agree with you. Um, Ron DeSantis is normally an overzealous culture warrior, so his silence is telling. But the overwhelming majority of the American mm -hmm. people support Roe versus Wade. And the draft opinion from Justice Alito is a frontal assault not only on reproductive rights, but on the legal basis for a whole range mm -hmm. of legal cases, particularly landmark LGBTQ cases, Lawrence versus Texas, or Burgerfell versus Hodges, if, if the Supreme Court, if the government can determine whether you can have an abortion, then where do you draw the line? Can the government determine whom you can marry or whom you can be intimate with or how you can raise your children? All these rights that we've long taken for granted are at risk. It's good to see you both this morning. Congresswoman Plaskett, I'll, I'll begin with you. First of all, it's nice to have both Brooklyn and the Bronx represented here uh, on the show this morning. Um, let me ask you about the economy, though. These are, we're talking about some of those cultural issues, but front and center, at least Republicans hope so, will be inflation and how expensive, as you know, it is to go fill up a, your car with a tank of gas or to scan through a grocery line these days. Unemployment is low, yes. There are more jobs than we can fill in this country, yes. But people are having trouble for paying, paying for things right now. How do you address that to voters come fall? I think we uh, we agree with them that yes, prices are too high. And we explain what our process is and what our plan is to bring those prices down. Listen, we also need to remind Americans of what this president and this administration and having a unified Congress has been able to do. That we saved Americans' lives. The Democrats were the one that saved Americans' jobs and Americans' businesses. And if you stick with us, we're going to the ones that are going to bring us out of this inflation and supply chain issues. That if you go to the other side, none of these things are going to be there. Uh, and that's the clear message that Democrats have got to be laser focused on to agree with Americans that yes, this is in fact true. Yes, you are facing these problems. We have addressed the others just like we faced COVID and we got us out of it. We faced uh, job loss and businesses being closed and we got us out of it. And we as Democrats are the only ones who care about your everyday life and we're going to get you out of it also. So Congressman Torres, the Inflation, to be sure, yeah. but also if indeed this Roe v. Wade decision is as we think it will be, and if it is overturned, there's a sense that a lot of this, the burden of a lot of this is going to fall disproportionately on 
those who are less well off, mm -hmm. communities of color, that they are don't have the access or means enabled to have the services that others might. You, you represent a district that has had periods of economic struggle. Tell us a little bit, if you will, about what this would be for the people who live where you represent. As far as inflation? You no, know, well, either, either way, inflation or on abortion rights. If, if these things were to be taken away from them, it make their life that much more challenging. So thankfully, we have strong protections here in New York State. But if Roe versus Wade is overturned, abortion becomes illegal immediately in 13 states and could become illegal in as many as half of the states. And so people would have to travel out of state in order to access basic reproductive care. And there are low-income people, particularly people of color, who lack the means to travel to simply access health care. So it's going to impose a disproportionately destructive burden on the lowest income families. And inflation has a, a huge impact in my district. But for me, the best way to address inflation is to lower costs, is to do what the Democrats did in the House, vote to cap the price of insulin at $25. I'm a strong advocate for the child tax credit, which would benefit the families hardest hit by inflation. And research has shown that the most common use of CTC payments are food, utilities, and housing, which are precisely the sectors hardest hit by inflation. So, Congresswoman Plaskett, let's talk about when the rubber literally hits the road here with this decision, which will come down, which after 40 years of effort, Roe v. Wade will be overturned. Mm -hmm. That seems almost, almost guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah. So, let's say you have a daughter, 17 years of age, and you live in Lubbock, Texas, and your daughter becomes pregnant mm -hmm. with her boyfriend, and you can't afford for her to have her child at 17 <clears throat> because you think her life would pretty much be over in sense of growth. So you literally then, in Lubbock, Texas, if this passes, have to get in your car and travel, what, 250, 300 miles, maybe more. Texas is a big state to find help for your daughter. How do you explain that to the American voter, the impact, the single impact of just one aspect of this decision? I think we have to explain it to the American voters that the Republican Party does not care about your life. They care about power. They care about having control. And this is one, another instance in which they are trying to exert that on you. That I, as a mother, that you, as a father, are going to have to become criminals under Texas law to take your daughter, to take your wife, to, to make health decisions that you all believe is the appropriate one for their life. This GOP, these extreme right, have made American citizens who are trying to do the right thing in the long term for the economic, emotional, and mental stability of their families, criminals. It's really unbelievable. Uh, and, and again, here you have a party that loves to go around trumpeting themselves as champions of freedom. Oh, you can't put a, a cloth across my face in the middle of a pandemic. I control my own body. Mm -hmm. And now it is the Republican Party. It's these same people that are taking away a woman's right to control their lives, their bodies, their own reproductive organs. What hypocrites. Well, Members, well, Joe, uh, Joe uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. The, Re the Republican Party has never been shy about the fact that those rights and privileges to be able not to wear a mask or to be able not to uh, uh, get vaccinated are really just for them. It's not for everyday Americans. Mm -hmm. They do not care about everyday Americans' lives or else, as Richie said, they would have voted for the child tax credit. They would have voted for family leave. They would have voted to bring down the cost of insulin. They are not interested in your life. They are interested in power and the ability to keep it for themselves. And there's, there's this weird obsession, Mika, uh, uh, with masculinity, yeah. hyper-masculinity among, among people on the Trump right. It's like, I, you know, a war on masculinity. I wonder what they would do if Democrats, if Democratic members of the Supreme Court or, or, or members of the Supreme Court appointed by Democrats started to try to control their, their, their reproductive organs. Oh, my God, <laughs> they'd go crazy. They're obsessed enough with them, 
as it is now and, and their lack of masculinity. It's, it's just, it's bizarre. So members of Congress, Stacey Plaskett and Richie Torres, thank you both very much for being on this morning.